محمود نزال عمره 17 عايش بكباتي جنين My name is Mahmoud Nazal. I'm 17 and I live in Kabatia, in Jenin. Kabatia has got parks and space for agriculture, and we also have a few cafes where people spend time. As a child, I often played outside with my cousins and neighbors after school. One day, I was with my friends at the beach in the boundaries of the occupied territories when a group of armed people in civilian clothes suddenly approached and started beating us. They beat us for around five minutes before taking us to some police vehicles. I was only wearing my swimming shorts. They didn't show me an arrest warrant. They didn't tell me anything. They simply approached, beat us, and took us far away from the beach. We were blindfolded and handcuffed inside the vehicle. I couldn't see anything, but I knew the vehicle was full of soldiers. It was only when we arrived at the police station that they told me that I was being arrested. I thought about my family. I wondered what would happen to me. At the police station, they strip searched me several times. They made us sit outside in the yard for 10 hours, from 4 p.m. until 2 a.m., handcuffed and blindfolded. We were shouted at constantly, and an interrogator came outside to talk to us every hour. Then they transferred me from a police station to the prison. I didn't know where I was and why I was there. They put me in a solitary confinement cell and gave me an orange uniform, a prisoner's uniform. When I entered the cell, I wasn't expecting what I saw. It was a tiny room, around two meters by one meter, and it smelled. The light was so disturbing that I couldn't sleep. The mattress was very dirty. It was very cold in there. The walls were so rough that I couldn't lean on them. No matter how loudly you shout, or what is happening to you in that cell, nobody will hear you. I wondered how long I'd have to stay here. What will happen to me? What will happen to my family? Where is my mother now? Does she know that I am here? I stayed in that cell for 20 days. I was consumed psychologically. It was hard to sleep in the cell because of the constant bright light. To this day, I don't like lights. When I fell asleep for a few minutes, I used to dream I was with my mother. When I'd wake up, I'd realize that I was still in the cell and I felt down. Each day, my sleep was interrupted and I'd only sleep for around four hours or so. The hardest thing about being in that cell was that there was nothing to do. Even when I thought about killing myself, there was nothing to kill myself with. When they took me to the interrogation room, they blindfolded and handcuffed me. I couldn't see any of my friends or anyone, other than the jailer and the interrogator. They treated me extremely badly. When I asked for food, they refused. At some point, they told me they were going to transfer me to Mejidor prison, where I would be detained with other people. When they told me that, I was so happy. I knew it was not going to be as bad as the solitary confinement cell. Before they took me to prison, they put me with the birds. The birds are undercover informants. They usually tell the prisoner that they are also prisoners and ask you questions. Sometimes the birds also accuse you of being a spy in order to pressure you to confess. When I was released from Mejido and allowed to go home, I thanked God I was still conscious and that all the cruelty that they had put me through didn't make me lose my mind. I saw my father, brothers and friends waiting for me outside the prison. My feelings were indescribable. I looked up at the sky. 
I was deprived from everything in prison. My family, happiness, food. I was deprived of my childhood. I was deprived of everything except being alive. In that moment, I wanted to do everything. When I arrived home, I saw my mother and I hugged her. I knew I would not be imprisoned and controlled anymore. Even though I was happy for myself, I felt really sad that there were still people inside those prisons, including children my age. When I was released, I found light irritating and I wanted to be alone. My friends tell me that I'm different now. I used to love surrounding myself with people, but now I don't like it. I used to be calm, but now I get angry and irritated easily. I didn't feel that I was ready to go back to school. And some organizations like the YMCA and some psychiatrists have helped me to continue my education. The lawyer that Defense for Children International Palestine sent to me has helped me a lot. He kept in touch with me regularly and comforted me. He told me everything would be okay and helped to reduce my sentence. To this day, he calls me to make sure I'm doing okay. I think DCI Palestine does a great and important job. When Muhammad was with me, and Burhan was with me, and he was with me until today, he was يعني كثيري وفادتني كثير يعني وانا اللي انا مسوي لكم اياه ولا شيء بالنسبه لي انتم سويتوا لي محمود is one of over 100 Palestinian children that DCI Palestine is in contact with who've been held by Israeli authorities in solitary confinement over the last 5 years it's a practice that amounts to torture or cruel inhuman or degrading treatment or punishment over a 4 year period between January 2016 and December 2019 we documented 108 cases where Palestinian children detained by the Israeli military were held in isolation for two or more days during the interrogation period. The average duration of their isolation was just over 14 days. The evidence we've collected overwhelmingly indicates that isolation of these children in the Israeli military detention system is practiced solely to obtain a confession for a specific offence or to gather intelligence under interrogation. We found no evidence of a legally justifiable use of isolation of these children, such as for disciplinary, protective or medical reasons. To read our 2021 report about the solitary confinement of Palestinian children by Israeli authorities, visit dci-palestine.org and search for Isolated and Alone. Thanks for listening.